Right. When I wondered how to present this talk, I thought I might just tell you an anecdote from my life, how it all started, that I cared about net politics and data protection, privacy. And this was due to a self-sprayed Stasi 2.0 t-shirt. But then I started doing my homework, preparing for this talk. And I googled Arne Semsrott. Maybe I should have known more about him in advance, but the third hit was a Spiegel Online article, and I quote, Arne Semsrott improves the world. And I have to add that little Anna was 19 at the time, and I was quite impressed. By now, he is a political scientist and a freelance journalist for net, netspolitik.org, and he works for the Open Knowledge Foundation. You can find him at their info desk. He leads projects on fragdenstaat.de, ask the state, and he has a very long list on projects on uh, freedom of information, lobbyism, transparency, and we are very happy to have him here to tell us about um, how the government errs. Thank you. Yes, I'm not going to say anything about the Spiegel Online article. Open fire. We are in the um, big year of freedom of information. This year is a very important year for freedom of information and the freedom of information laws that exist in the world, they're all revolutionary. I um, just made this slide because I wanted to stand in front of the word revolution at some point. These laws are revolutionary because Freedom of information laws change the default setting of um, offices of, of mm, no, authorities. It's been quite, you know, it's, the default case was not opening up any information at all. And freedom of information laws change, turn around, turn this default on its head and say that all information that the state has have to be given to the public unless there's a special interest to protect them. And the Swedish freedom of information law, the Offentlichkeitsprinzipen, has turned 250 years this year. The second oldest, the Freedom of Information Act, so FOIA, has turned 50. EFG, Informationsfreiheitsgesetz, so the German freedom of information law turned 10. Frag den Staat.de, ask the state, turned five. And Baden-Württemberg's freedom of information law turned one. So, 249 years after the first freedom of information law, Baden-Württemberg got one of its own, and it's the worst in of all German states. However, there are four more German states that don't have any freedom of information law at all. Those are Lower Saxony, Saxony, Hesse, and of course Bavaria. And those four states don't have any freedom of information laws. I just copied the map from last year. Lower, Sax Lower Saxony has, um, well, they all have various governments. I forgot Bavaria's. And next year is going to be very important for the freedom of information. This is due to this state. I made this animation myself. That's Thuringia. And Thuringia will not only get its own Freedom of Information Act, but it will also get a transparency law. And that's quite um, important because Hamburg has one of these. And it means that you don't have to request information, but central data will be, you know, important data will be proactively published in a, in a central register. And there's another reason why this is decisive, because 
it will decide whether or not one of the Germans, um, the, the constitution protection, so one of the intelligence agency will have to publish their data. <laughs> And so, yes, the discussion is whether or not the Verfassungsschutz, the constitutional protection, will have to publish their data. And this is going to be one of the crucial fights of next year. So, will they have to publish their data or not? But let's start with some successes. We had these two. That's Friedel Springer, the most, and Joachim Sauer. One of the, uh, Friedel Springer is um, the most powerful publisher, and Sauer is Angela Merkel's husband. And they not only have friendly re relations, but also financial uh, relations, because Friedel Springer wired quite a lot of money to uh, the Merkels and because we looked at her foundation and we got them through a freedom of information risk request and all the members of the curators committee get a very large salary, they meet twice a year for a couple of hours, they decide on a couple of projects and they get 10,000 euros in return. How did we request this? The Friedel Springer Foundation is a private foundation. Yes, it is, but it has to send its Satzung to the to the Senate, and that's how you can get the document. This here is just an, is, is just a scan, but it's the main report on the German um, Development Fund for Rwanda, and you can see how the Germans knew about the Rwandan genocide before it happened, and it's a very interesting report. It's more than 130 pages. It's on Faktenstaat.de, and this report shows that Germans knew about the gen genocide before it happened. The uh, authorities knew that, sent, uh, told the German embassy that massacres were about to happen and the German embassy looked away. And some party foundations, some foundations of German parties trained journalists before this genocide who worked for the RTLM radio, which is the radio station that um, gave away the positions of victims so that they could be killed. And I think this report is also important today because Germany is still cooperating with regimes like in Sudan. There is currently a project running in Sudan with um, the president of Sudan that who tries to prevent refugees from entering the Europe European Union. And of course, the question is what happened to our never again promises. But this report is interesting for another reason, which is because it turned 18. And it was only published this year by us. And it shows very well what the problem with freedom of information is in Germany. Many journalists already had this report. Many organizations already had it. But none of them published it. They might have quoted it. They might have used it for their internal work. But they just got, it was just leaked to them or they you know, relied on the fact that uh, the, the ministry told them not to publish it. And this is a large problem because journalists always um, rely on, on information that they get, but they're not not allowed to tell who it, who it came from. They, they can't publish the source, they just say it came from security sources or something. But with the Freedom of Information Act, they can, they can publish, publish their sources. What improved uh, this year was uh, something that improved with a law that was passed, and it was a law which basically states that uh, the government needs to release uh, all their information based on this law. Uh, it's about a thousand different reports 
on human rights policies in China, financial rights. Uh, there's, it's about naked swimming, um, all sorts of other uh, reports. There's also one on uh, Karl Deodor zu Gutenberg, who's the former Federal Minister of Economics and Energy, uh, who uh, asked for those reports and then plagiarized them in his own doctoral thesis, his PhD thesis, which then eventually got him removed from office. So he had a, a few um, reports that he'd asked for, but now they have to be released, and uh, the German government, uh, and so we basically went to them and asked, them, it, it doesn't make sense that we have to ask for every single one of the thousand ones, why don't you just release all of them on your homepage, and up to this point they haven't done it yet, so now we had to uh, take other measurements and created an online database with all the titles of uh, this. Um, scientific service and you can uh, basically click on the uh, titles of these and by doing so you uh, asked um, directly towards the government for that report to be released and this is what caused uh, it basically to look like this at the government and um, the government was a bit uh, baffled and they were a bit like what are we going to do with a 3,000 request we got within two weeks so what they did was they went to the inner ministry and they just basically try to change the um, law basis um, and they basically, because they wanted to get rid of this obligation, but um, after three weeks after the campaign of us <laughs> sending these kind of automated clicked requests, they just decided to uh, publish everything uh, online on the website without having there be any need for an official request being filed. I think it's really interesting to look what happened in the background here. What we basically did was we caused economic um, pressure onto the government. Basically, we and you all made so many requests, so it was cheaper for them to release all the documents than not releasing the documents. And I think there's a very interesting mechanism that I'm going to go back to later on. So we had this infrastructure that we created, and uh, the question is, where are we going to target? at this one next and we kind of thought why don't we take a central topic of the CCC uh, which is surveillance and what are we going to do who are we going to ask about surveillance um, it's the employment agencies of Germany 409 in total 409 job centers in Germany that all have enormous capacities and rights to uh, surveil their so-called clients um, and everybody who lives on their bill. And they send kind of a, a questionnaire out to whoever is um, on their files. And it's a, it's, this is a questionnaire who, that wants to understand uh, the father of a child um, and you have to state whoever you slept with um, during the time of the time that you conceived the child. Uh, if you can't state who is the father of the child, uh, please state uh, <laughs> why you cannot provide a name of who is the father of your child. And this is just one excerpt of what job agencies in Germany can do. And they do this because they have to sanction if somebody is doing somewhat of like uh, illegal claiming of money that they shouldn't be getting and they want to um so basically what we did was question fragtenstaat.de slash job center which is what they try to do so they can target their the job centers and we've tried to get access to all these documents how sanctions are being distributed how job centers act upon sanctions and up to this point there's so many people who entered in on this every job center has been asked and half of all these internal guidelines are now online and published already. It's half of them. And you get funny emails like, Dear Mr. Bayer, I uh, got rid of the feeling... Uh, no, so I'm sorry, it's really... Ah, we're moving on to the next email. Sorry for that mistranslation. 
Uh, this email basically uh, states that uh, they can't release the guidelines because they um, are based upon personal experience, so because they are basically uh, copyrighted under Creative Commons law. And because we were so amazed uh, by this kind of creative response, we created a whole website uh, that's called The Standard Work on Internal Guidelines of Actions at the Employment Agencies in Nuremberg. And they have built these guidelines through learning, research and understanding and discussing them. So now we've got the we've got the tools of mass questioning, and we honestly want to know what's next. What's next? What is what kind of interesting list is out there? What kind of ministries do you want to tap into and get interested in? Maybe also something like this. This is about uh, Volkswagen. These are the first 300 pages. Mm. And you can see um, that there's a lot of times they um, reject these kind of question requests of information based on for economics, uh, based on economic reasons and reasoning. And we created this. We created basically a special art piece. It's a paper size A3, and they're hand folded and. Um, punched holes. So the question also is, what do you do when uh, these kind of mass requests don't work? What do you do when you have to deal with a police of Hamburg? But two years ago, there was a request filed through our website uh, if they have a data set on uh, sport violence, and most uh, German counties have this kind of file and this list, and this list basically states who's regarded as a hooligan. It's a pretty chaotic way of getting into and on that list, but it's, also, it's of course especially hard to get removed from that list, and the Hamburg police basically stated, no, we do not have a list that uh, lists anybody who's involved in violence in, in the field of sport. And um, part of the Ger Hamburg Senate uh, stated, no, yeah, we do have uh, one of those files and we have it, we've been having it for nine years. And our big question was, well, what happened there? I, uh, asked and um, got a different answer and the police basically said, well, that was a big misunderstanding. Um, you asked for a, um, you asked for a, a list of violent offenders within the sport field and then they kind of did a little word game and basically didn't give out the information based because he didn't use the right correct terms that they use for that list. So then we refiled the request and uh, asked for the actual list about uh, and so now we can prove well, no, sorry. I, sorry, I got confused with the word game here. Um, so basically we refiled the request and then in turn they, um, they send us a bill of 120 euros for having to deal with our request. So we created Sue the State, <coughs> Verklagt in Staat, but th that didn't really help. So we this this year we built Zerschlagt in Staat, so destroy this. No, we didn't. We didn't go quite that far, but the domain is ours. Don't don't try anything. No, but we did we did two other very important things together with Wikimedia. We created a fee fund. Wikimedia covers the fees for freedom of information requests as long as the results of that can be used in Wikimedia projects. For instance, as a reference, as a, uh, as a citation in, in Wikipedia or something that can be added to Wikidata, if that is the case, then Wikimedia may cover your fees, which is a fairly important project. And we also have uh, launched Transparenzklagen, transparency lawsuits together with the Society for Freedom Rights and you can become a supporting member. Transparenzklagen.de, transparencylawsuits.de is a, is a legal fund. We cover your legal fees as long as your um, 
It looks like your lawsuit may be successful and it has a strategic importance and that can that covers quite a lot of them. So if you your freedom of information request gets rejected and you want to see them in court, then we can cover your fees and we can give you a lawyer. What does it look like? This is an example. We could have, we didn't cover this, but we would have liked to. He asked for the criminal places in Berlin, the Riga Straße. He wanted to know more information, have more information about that. And the police replied that the police work cannot be calculable or predictable. And of course, this is the secretification of police. You have to, you have to see them in court and it's great to see that FIF is doing this. So see you in court. We take you to court and if you want we um, well we we help you go to court. We also did a, a started constitu constitutional complaint against this um, from Ryan Palantinet. It said that um, applicants have to prove their identity or they have to supply their identity and this of course is goes against um, Frag den Staat because Frag den Staat allows anonymous requests and this is of course against your um, your personal you know your, your basic right to express your identity as you wish and that's why we started a com constitutional complaint in Rhein Palatinate and these, this proof of identity isn't really clearly defined. What could this look like? This year, somebody um, made a request in uh, Heidelberg, and he said that I'm Thomas de Maizière, and this is my um, my ID card as as proof of my identity. Now, of course, he wasn't the Minister of the Interior, and um, the city replied, yeah, here's, here's all you asked for and we're not going to um, you're, we're not going to ask for any fees in your special case. So it's completely pointless. It's a it's also unconstitutional because anyone, no matter how old, where they live or where they're from, what country they're from, can um, can make these requests. The only people who will be prevented from making requests are them. Do we have time to watch that again? No, we don't. So, I believe that it makes sense to go all the way and sue them. And uh, Wikimedia's fund, as well as um, Transparency Lawsuit Fund, have the same idea. They want to create economic pressure. If we always fight against these fees, if we always fight against these rejections, it's going to become so expensive for the state to proactively publish all this information. And this is the new shirt that we have. On the back, there's still some some space left. These are the tour dates that we have. These are some lawsuits in uh, some, some courts in Germany. So there's quite a room left for the second edition. We hope that we're going to see more of that from you. So our question is, are you in? We have funding, we have a legal fund. We think it's important to do quite a lot more. Look at Thuringia where we're going to see decisive action next year if we if we can't get this through with a Social Democrat minister, we, we then we, we we will have lost the fight. And we have a short epilogue for you. Two years ago, Stefan and I 
So two years ago, Stefan and I up here on stage, uh, already wrapped. I don't know if you guys remember this, but after that, a lot of people came up to us and said, do it, do it, never, never do it again. Please, never do it again. But um, maybe we can dim, dim the light a little bit. Yes, thank you, create some atmosphere. And we're gonna move further to the middle of the stage. So this year, we took a new genre. We didn't, we didn't go for rap again. And uh, we, we uh, are gonna do something on the Freedom of Information Act, Feuer, which in German phonetically sounds like fire, Feuer. Um, so, and I'm gonna try to do my very best to translate the lyrics that they have created towards a Ramstein song. I'm gonna spare you my singing because it's not gonna be fun for anyone if I do that. Um, so responsible is who knows the files. Through fire, they now need to state the facts. I bring light into the court only under three fire <laughs> so now they're headbanging which you can see uh, if you're in the audience but if you're listening to our audio stream this is what's going on on stage question 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 sinful is who keeps files stuck in drawers, unpublished, regardless of FOIA. FOIA is obviously short for Freedom of Information Act. A document that no one knows is all the same? FOIA. Question. Question. FOIA. Ask. Question. Question. AD. Oh, no, they're headbanging again. A document everyone now knows can be a threat. Question. Another thread is our initiative, question that stayed, and through FOIA now we can start to act. Are you in? Be part of it. Join with FOIA and just with one click get an inside view. FOIA. <laughs> just one click gets you an inside view. Question. Ask. Don't be silenced. Fire. All right, I'm going to give you a bit of the audio of what's going on. Fire. Fire. Fuck on. Fuck on. Alright, so they ended this with uh, spraying some lovely confetti into the crowd. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I think there's probably not going to be much more time for question and answers. Uh, so thank you already for listening in. Uh, if you have any feedback to give, do that under the hashtag C3T. And uh, you can also send us an email at hello at c3lingo.org. Um, yes, and uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to us. Um, this was uh, Philip and Mela translating for you. Uh, hopefully we did a good job and everybody got the gist of it, I think. We pretty much caught most of what was going on on stage. Um, now we're going back to stage. So I think I don't have to ask for another round of applause. I think this was a very clear, happy crowd. Oh, no, we still do have time for questions. But only very, very few. 
The question is, how do you want to clear up the stage now? And now everybody's whistling again. Oh, we actually do have a question. I would like to ask person on microphone four. Question. So yeah, what happened to the police uh, with the false statement that they gave? What are you doing? Um, answer from the stage is, oh, well, somebody filed an official complaint, but you have no right to know what uh, happened with that when it comes to police matters, unfortunately. And there is another question from the internet. Yes, there is a question from the internet. The question is, how do you file questions on uh, the German version of the BBC, basically? Uh, answer from the stages where there's what's, what's not re in regards to journalistic content-based things. You can uh, make requests and it works. It's really difficult for uh, the R ARD and the ZDF, which is the first and the second program. But um, so with those two, it's a bit hard. Uh, with the VDR, it usually works quite well. Uh, but principle, like on principle, you can ask and request information from them just as well. Okay, question from microphone two. Uh, a lot of times you file a request and uh, 30 days away later you uh, have to wait and then you file another request and uh, then they only give you the answer two years later. Is there any way to speed this up? Question, uh, answer from the stage. Uh, no, uh, it's really, really difficult. Those kind of um, deadlines um, are very much just state it within the law and there's very f little that you can do on, on the time that they're allowed to take uh, when working on your requests. So it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, to speed this process up, but I think uh, the more uh, requests are filed, you, you, the faster you will get results. Unfortunately, we're now out of time, but you can find Anna at the Open Knowledge Foundation's assembly. And I would like to ask you, please, one more big round of applause.